right, we're rolling. Sean, what are we doing? Living the dream, baby, 24-7. LA, traffic, as usual. It's a nightmare. It's the downside to living here. This would be a great, great place if it wasn't for all the people. All the people ruin California. So we are in a rental van heading up to the prop store of London. Fortunately, not going to London. We're going to their, I think, Valencia office. Going to pick up a couple props I acquired. A little bit nervous about. Kind of went a little cray cray on this last auction. I think I may have to seek counseling of some sort. Um, if there's like an AA for collectors, I think I need to go. So we're picking up two items, because these are gonna be two separate videos for sure. Two separate items. So I don't know which video you're watching right now. If you're gonna be watching the one item or the other item. So we'll probably have to use this footage twice, but I can talk about each separately. So there'll be, there'll be different content, but the setup, it's the same. We're going to, we're going to prop store pick up some stuff and I had to rent a van because one of the things is so damn big it won't even fit in my SUV yeah it's it's an experience what is the most stressful thing we're going through today well I mean the most stressful part about this entire thing was the money because what happens is with auctions and they and believe me the auction houses prop store profiles and history heritage all those places they expect and hope that you will get caught up in the moment and keep bidding and you get it gets competitive and you start getting like oh i can't lose and blah 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 and this is one of those moments i will say this on one of these items the expensive one i hit the the button and I said, that's it. I am not, I, I absolutely am not going to hit it again. There's no way. I sat there for a moment as they're going, okay, last call. I was like, so, no, come on, someone, someone, buy this, please. <laughs> and then I won it. They charge a buyer's premium on top of it. Then you got California sales tax on top of it. And the thing that you thought you're paying this much for, you're actually paying this much for, that really stresses you out. Then, you know, you start to think about where am I going to put these things? Where's this going to go? One of these items I want in my home. I opened an office and in the office I'm creating a museum. And that's where the bulk of my collection is going to reside. I'm gonna keep key things at home, but it's just getting too much for my house. So I need to I need to be able to I wanna be able to display it all properly. And that was you know, and the fact that I've I've branched out to needing an office anyway, so a legit office. So that's what I'm doing. But the one item I want in my house is a very large item. It's the Pillar of Souls from Hellraiser 3. And when I was bidding on it, I didn't take into consideration its size. I really didn't. I was just kind of like, gotta have that. Gotta have that, <laughs> you know. So I bought it and then I looked at the dimensions and I went, huh, I think, nah, I think that will fit. Then I start doing some measurements. And I realized the damn thing won't even fit through my front door. I'd have to get it around the backyard through the back doors. And then I wanted it upstairs. I mean, literally, there's about a half inch to spare to get it through the opening it would need to get through. And it's gonna be, getting it upstairs, I've already ruled out as an option. I'm not, I haven't attempted it. We haven't actually, I haven't even seen the thing in person yet. So I'm going off of what they've told me and how heavy they say it is. I don't even know if it's possible to try to get it upstairs. I, I think that's a pipe dream. So I have to make room for it in another room, which is my living room. It's the only option. So that's where it's going to go for the time being. Uh, 
that maybe it'll move to the office but I really wanted this piece of my house because I love the way it looks so we're now heading there to see this thing in person I'm really nervous that it's going to be a lot more fragile than I thought there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of money I've paid for a lot of uncertainty I probably should have went and looked at it in person first but I actually got COVID right before this auction happened and I was invited to come to the prop store they actually invited me as an influencer to come cover the auction and see all the stuff unfortunately I couldn't go because I still had COVID when they had their preview day we're just winging it let's see what happens kids Jesus. Well, I mean, yeah. we would give you some ratchet straps to tie it down for you. But, oh, but, then, what? That's, but that's the thing, and yeah, the sure. pressure again. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Ratchet straps would I mean, not it seems cool. like the, the, the smartest way to do this would be a lift gate truck that it could stand up in, right? Um, Even just a box truck, we have a forklift in the so it wouldn't be a problem getting it in there like, yeah. without a lift gate. Uh, well, the, then I have the issue of getting it out. <laughs> that's that's the that's the problem. What do you mean you don't have a forklift at home? <laughs> I loaned it to a neighbor and never <laughs> oh, brought it back. Oh, there's your so, first mistake. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I hate to admit this, I think we're gonna. I, I don't think we're gonna be able to do this. I, I mean, I don't blame you. Sean, why is this empty? Okay, so. But the deal is, is this, this is where the thing was going to go, because I was told by them that uh, it could be laid down, is what the person told me. I had called, spoke to a representative, and I, one of my biggest concerns was, can it be laid down? Because it said it was fragile, you know, it's foam. Uh, the person on the phone told me it could be, so... Anyhow, it can't be. I was informed that it actually um, was delivered standing up. So I'm like, okay, well, if they delivered it standing up, there's a reason. And those guys are like, the guys that work in the back, who are awesome, by the way. The, guy, the shipping guys were fucking awesome. Those guys, you know, they knew it was up. How are we going to resolve this? Let's talk to, you know, somebody in charge. And they bring out this guy who... just say not the friendliest dude um who basically kind of yeah okay well yeah you know just throw some bubble wrap on it and put it in the van i'm like doesn't seem like you know he's literally telling the guys just to fucking wrap it with bubble wrap and throw it in the van lay down some foam which is what this is i got some free foam i guess as soon as he walked away you know me too we're all just like that's not a good idea you don't want to put weight on any of those pieces and i said well I rented this van, cost me a couple hundred dollars to rent. Gas, I've already spent $170 in gas and I have to return it filled. Uh, and we're in Valencia and I live in South Orange County. And we've, how long did it take us to get up here? A couple hours. Our day is shot and we planned our whole day around this. I lost a day of work. I lost money there too. I asked the shipping guy, what would it cost to have it shipped 
you know, standing up, flatbed, a truck with a, a lift or whatever, delivered, taken out on my sidewalk. He said, guesstimate 500 bucks. And I said, well, at the end of the day, that's what I paid for this. Had I known that, you know, I probably would have gone that route. But the person on the phone, their representative, mind you, told me it could be laid down. So now I'm out 500 bucks and the guy, all he cared about was getting the cashier's check from me. And he just kept saying, well, give me the cashier's check and we'll sort it out later. And I'm like, no, I ain't giving you shit till we sort this out. I think for you guys giving me incorrect information, your representative, I think it's a fair swap. I spent about 500 bucks for this. You're saying it's gonna roughly cost 500 to deliver. I dropped, I don't wanna say how much, an incredibly significant amount of money, more than I ever have in my life for, for props, ever. Um, and he literally was like, you know, it's not our problem. I mean, that's that was the attitude. You can leave and we can sort it out later, but give me the check. And I'm like, no, not getting the check. <laughs> you ain't getting shit. You ain't getting shit till we sort this out. So now we're at a, what we call stalemate. $500 to, to get what I paid or what I'm supposed to pay? Wow, it's uh, insignificant to say the least, but it's principal. And it's the fact that I've already spent way more. I mean, these guys charge like a 25% buyer's premium, right? And they charge the seller like 25%. They literally make 50% of what the final auction price is, okay? And you're gonna squabble over 500 bucks? I mean, wow. Uh, you guys just sold an X-Wing for two point, was it 2.2, 2.5 2 million dollars? $500, really? Wow, and check the records. I've bought a lot of stuff from you guys. I've spent a significant amount of money so, kids, this is where we are. This is going to be an interesting video. Uh, will they probably, like, then turn around, try to sue me or something? I'm sure. Uh, but the, the fucked part was when I said to the guy, your guy gave me the wrong information. He said, no, he doesn't. He said that you asked if it could be transported by van. I asked if it could be laid down so it could be transferred in a van. And he said yes. And I said, are you sure? Because it's foam. And, you know, it says in the description, it's brittle. That's specifically why I asked those questions. And I asked them very specifically. Now I'm here. You know, the, the term, the customer is always right. I honestly hate that term because the customer isn't always right. It's true. But in this case, the customer is absolutely fucking right. And that was another thing is I actually told these guys I hadn't paid. None of them knew. They were ready to just hand it all to me. That was another screw up by customer service they literally gave me the shit didn't know i hadn't paid i told them and i willingly told them i hadn't paid you know what i'm an honest guy i have honor i have integrity i'm not going to try to screw somebody right now i feel like i'm getting screwed so this is where we're at now we we are we are over here this is near magic mountain oddly enough right over here right just right over that way is where the vic morrow crash site was right over there Anyway, um, so now we have probably, with traffic, two and a half, three hour drive home. Thanks, prop store. Wanna come be in the video? Come on, Miga. Come on, come on up. There you go. There we go, I got the whole fam now. I'm at a much more peaceful spot with my little puppies here. We just got back from this long day, had to return the rental van we ended up not needing. We got an email from Prop Store. Hi, Sean. Please note that I spoke with management today regarding the pickup issue with the items you purchased in last week's EMLA auction. What was E? Oh, I don't even know what that stands for. Um, item dimensions are noted in the auction listings. However, we understand that you may have received conflicting information on how specific items could be transported. I had the conversation with the dude. He said what he said. I called him with that specific question in mind. Sorry about my dog licking, the, licking everything. This is a puppy. We apologize for the inconvenience caused and we are willing to accommodate delivery to your location. 
wow, customer service here. I'm getting some customer service. Please note that payment will be due prior to delivery. Oh, it's funny. I had it with me. You could have had it had you been nice. And per our terms and conditions, please advise at your earliest and we will provide delivery to you as requested. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Best regards, Ryan. Now, I'm not saying his last name just because I'm classy. It's so frustrating. I was there with a cashier's check in hand, ready to give it to them. And the guy just didn't want to deal with it. He, he just wanted to be rude and blow me off, you know? I don't know who talked to who. I'd like to think in my mind that that guy, the unpleasant person whose name I don't know, but I will look him up and I'll find him, um, that that guy went back to his manager or whoever his boss is and said, this guy bought blah, blah, blah. And this is, you know, and this is what he said. And that guy probably went, yeah, uh, you didn't do that. Yeah. Get a hold of this guy and tell him we'll take care of that. That's what I like to think in my mind happened. I hope so. I know it's likely that this guy is in a position where he gets away with this shit all the time, but somebody needs to be told how rude this dude was because it was so unnecessary. Brian and I went to Home Depot to return the van and the guy was so pleasant. And I was like, wow, this is a breath of fresh air. Uh, actual customer service. The guy was like, oh, I see you returned it with an extra quarter tank of gas in it than you left here with. We'll deduct $20 off of your receipt. And I'm like, wow appreciation somebody doing their job and being pleasant and making me want to come back and spend more money here and give you my business it's the little things you know in it right buddy isn't it the little things buddy knows it's the little things you know I just just be nice be a human being i don't know what happened to you today i don't know who hurt you in your life but don't take that out on me you you have a job and I, and i'd have to say from the looks of things a pretty fucking good job. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would do that job mu much happier in that position than you are, sir. I'm not a difficult person. I treat people the way I want to be treated. It's a sad state of affairs when, like I said to my girlfriend the other day, I saw this young kid uh, stop and open a door for an elderly couple that were walking in. And I said to her, I said, wow, that's, it's so refreshing to see that nowadays because People don't have courtesy anymore. There's such a lack of courtesy. I hold doors for people all the time. I always say thank you. It, it's so easy to be polite. When I see this kind of shit happen, it, it's so discouraging and it's shameful. Maybe I'm going, I'm ranting too much about this, but it really bothers me, especially when you're spending that kind of money. This is a significant amount. How about... Just the, oh, hey, hi, I'm so-and-so. You're Sean? Oh, nice. To, what can I do for you? The dude didn't even introduce himself. He walked up, talked to the shipping dudes, and never even acknowledged my existence. And he knew I was standing there. I was literally standing in between them. And I was like, wow. And he walked away, and I looked at the shipping guys, and I go, great to meet you too, sir. You know, I was, I was like, wow, that's... Uh, Guy's a little a uh, little cold. And then we had the problems. And then, boy, yeah, his charm really turned it up a few notches. Not at all. Even worse. The best line was when he goes, well, what are you, what are you ex expecting us to do? And I said, well, I was hope, you know, hoping for a little bit of compensation. Absolutely not. That's exactly what he said. Absolutely not. Just boom. Yet, I'm getting compensation. So clearly somebody with half a brain that was like, oh shit, yes, let's not screw this dude. Let's take care of our customers. Somebody, somebody nice. Uh, you know, but the, the fuck thing is the fact we wasted our whole day. We wasted our whole day and drove up in 100 degree weather, two and a half hours each way. When it was all said and done, as we were up there for an hour, this was a good six hour plus excursion for nothing. And now I gotta figure out how to get them their money because I'm certainly not gonna put a cashier's check in the mail. 
So now how do I get them this cashier's check before they'll deliver my items? This is a whole nother quandary, a quandary we wouldn't have had he just been civil. And, and we figured it out right there while I was standing face to face. Anyway, I know I'm a little bitch. I'm sitting here pissing and moaning. There's people with a lot worse problems in the world, but you know what? This is my problem. This is my channel. I can piss and moan all I want on it. This video was going to be a fun video about me getting a cool prop and watching us put it in here and go, wow, there it is. But it turned in a whole lot more. So if anything, this douchebag gave us an interesting video, right? All right, here's the latest update. I decided to get in touch with the owner well, I don't know if he's the owner, but he's like the main guy at Prop Store of Los Angeles, a gentleman by the name of Brandon. I told him exactly what happened. He was very cool, very courteous, very uh, accommodating, apologized, said that he doesn't know why that person acted that way and that's not like him and blah, blah, blah. He will get the pillar delivered with my other items. They will deliver it to my door and they will take care of that. Then when I asked about the situation with the check, well, how am I gonna get you the check? I don't wanna have to drive another two and a half hours each way to hand a check that, you know. And he said, not a problem. We'll, we'll uh, accept the check upon delivery. So, you know what? This is the guy that I probably should have talked to the first time. I know he was in a meeting when this was all going down because they kept saying that he was in a meeting and that they were stepping in and kind of filling him in. He told me that what he was told was that a customer had purchased an item that the dimensions were listed on the website for and the vehicle I brought was not big enough to put the item in which was completely false. That's what he said was being relayed to him and why he was kind of like, well, that's not our fault kind of thing. The dimensions were in the auction. He brought a vehicle too small. But that, as you know, I've covered this exhaustively here uh, in this story, that it was an issue of could it be laid down or not. There was plenty of room in that van. So anyway, all good. He's getting it taken care of. And it'll be delivered in about, because I had to go out of town, a week and a half. So we'll pick it up from there. The whole, the whole case? The whole oh, thing? You okay. <laughs> uh, also, just so you're aware, there's uh, penis inside. But you spray some water on them, they're biodegradable. So they, they go away. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Okay. You spray water on it. Alright, here, you grab the other We'd at least try to get it on the side one.
okay, that, that was a that, that would have been bad. We're gonna have to take it out. Okay, there's no fun in it. That was funny how you're off the ground. I'm like, you know, I don't let it like fly. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
you know, sometimes when you get caught up in, say, like an auction, you need to really think things through. I saw this bad boy, and I saw it quite a, you know, couple weeks in advance. Didn't bother to really read the dimensions to think about, you know, would it even fit through the front door? <laughs> Which it didn't. It didn't fit through the front door. Um, so we had to get it around the back of the house. I mean, this was a production. This whole experience is one for the books. This is, this, that, if you ever watch, if you watch the, me moving the pinball machine, and me and Anthony moving the pinball machine, that's nothing. That was, that was a walk in the park. This was an ordeal. This thing is so awkward and big, and you can't grab it. Like, you're like, oh man, it's got all these spots you could probably, no, you can't, because this is like a, you can't really say I'm squeezing a booby. Didn't think I was doing that. Anyway, it's, it's a, it's foam, so it's brittle. And if you were to put any pressure on it, it could just crack. I mean, if you look closely at it, you'll see cracks in it as it is. Um, so the only way you can move this thing is from the very top base, which is wood, because there's a wood center in the middle of this thing, and the bottom base. So I came up with this idea of screwing these mounts into the top with pipes and if we could get it tilted grab the pipes and, and move it that way and we only were able to do that from the back door we actually rolled it from the front sidewalk through the front lawn by laying down the plywood from the box it came in this was all just on the fly ideas on the side of the house there's an area there with some i have some giant hedges that are very tall Getting it through there got a little dicey, but it was all very wrapped, you know, wrapped very well. It was much bigger than it appears now, because if, if you could see all the bubble wrap that has come off this thing, I think there's more bubble wrap in my living room that's in the local staples right now on the shelves. Hands down the truth. I'm not, e not even exaggerating. And the amount of popcorn that they filled that box with, and those guys... Those shipping guys who I love, and they were awesome the whole way through. They did me one dirty in the end and said, oh yeah, you can just open this thing up, let it fall out, just water it because it's all biodegradable. I'd say 40% of the popcorn in there was not biodegradable. They mixed it. So we had a bunch of non-biodegradable popcorn blowing all over the neighborhood, which I'm shocked like a cop didn't roll up and a neighbor complain or something because it was it was friggin three stooges out there trying to scoop up this popcorn it was it was nuts and there's still popcorn blowing around this neighborhood we did the best we could but i think i'm gonna see popcorn in this neighborhood for a few years to come they said that their delivery time would be between one and three and uh those guys showed up almost right on the nose i think they got here at about 1 15. it is now 8 p.m and we finally got it in here in its spot. We did take a lunch break, but man, this was an undertaking. And there was a couple times there where I thought we were, were fucked. I mean, there was a time when it was in the box and we decided we were going to try to put it on a dolly and lay it back. And we almost lost it. And had we lost it and that thing came crashing down on the sidewalk, it would probably be screwed. I think it would have broke pretty badly. We muscled through it, man. I mean, it was, I, I think I felt like I dislocated my shoulder trying to keep it, you know I mean? <sighs> anyway, it's in here. Yeah, now it makes me wonder if I can't move. I can never move now. See, sh I should put this, I mean, it would, f I'm not gonna bother trying to put it in my office, you know, off site here, but, um, the original idea was I wanted it upstairs. There's a spot upstairs that's perfect for it. Perfect. Lots of room up there. Ain't happening. It's not getting up there. It's just, it, the, it's just too tight. There's just, this thing's too fragile and it's too tight to get it up around that corner and into that room. So 
I had to sacrifice this corner where I had a really comfy chair and I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that. Unfortunately, Nay has been very cool because she could be like, you know, are you fucking kidding me with this shit? Really? This thing? I gotta do some rearranging here in the living room, but uh, here it is. And I bought a gate to put around it because I don't trust my dogs and my dogs, you know, roam freely in the house. They're outside, locked outside at the moment. I gotta put this gate around it because the puppy is, if you could see, he's chewed on the edges of just about everything. So I know that thing would be a tasty meal for a little buddy. Little buddy. This has been quite an experience. I hope you had enjoyed this adventure, my pillar of souls adventure. And now I don't think I can ever move because getting, I don't know if somebody buys this house, they may have to get a pillar of souls with it. Because uh, getting, getting this thing out of here. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. This is what I do to preserve history. Horror history for you guys. I don't do this for me. It is for you.